these chicks underestimating you because of your age? Huh. Get ready for an ass whooping. What? What? Stop that with no remorse. Take a blast that when I'm licking off. Have the big heart hit up when I'm getting off. These bitches with no father figures, they be tricking off. Feel me? They be off the keys, knees, and that's for sure. If they try to run between these, I'll blow their doors. Put the jinx on the mall like the South Moors. Cause these bitches got the goal of holler hardcore. I'm cracking doors. Have to be the South Pole with no look. Give a fuck about these bitches, uh? And that's the hook. You know how I'm gonna get it. Split it. <laughs> All right. Oh, introduce, oh, me introduce myself. Okay, well, hello. My name is Marion Renault, and I am the Ben Weight ranked number 12 UFC fighter. Um, I'm also known as the Belizean Bruiser. And other than that, that's up. That's it. <laughs> hey, hey, that's wonderful. And uh, <laughs> I'm Coach Shelton Harrison and LDBC. This is your this is your boy, Coach Shelton Harrison. We're live on the Coach Shelton Harrison Boxing and MMA Show Live. Okay. All right, so the Belizean Bruiser, uh, Bruiser, I'm sorry, just introduced herself, guys. And we're going to have a fun interview today. And basically, you know, we're just going to start off with a few questions. But uh, um, I, I actually want to ask you, okay, you, you, you have a track and field background. How, how did you get started uh, doing mixed martial arts? Um, well, I have always been into boxing. I remember growing up watching boxing when it was still free on TV um, with my dad. And I always had a fascination with boxing. I, and believe it or not, I got in a lot of trouble in high school. So I got into a lot of fights. Um, so I wasn't afraid of fighting them. I've always been a fighter at heart, I guess. Um, so when I saw the Gina Carano and Cyborg fight um, and found out that these two were fighting for money, I was like, what? I want to do that. Um, and it just so happened that that year, my vice principal at the school that I worked for, she had been in boxing and she was a professional boxer. She had one um, professional fight and um, she, I asked her, hey, can you train me? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome. So um, my first bout of MMA started with, you know, boxing, learning. Um, I think that was like the basis of all my MMA was um, the foundation of boxing um, and I and I relate a lot of to what I do to boxing that helped me out with everything else everything just kind of fell into play oh, okay okay well that's good so so I mean I mean all, all of this happened so quickly because you know I actually kind of read a few things about you and you started doing mixed martial arts in 2010 mm -hmm. and yeah. so and so you actually been going in and beating these women up. I'm talking about like laying hands <laughs> on them. And you only got what roughly 6 to 7 years of experience? Yes. Hey, that's pretty impressive. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, actually, um I had been training a couple maybe a year before 2010. 2010 was my first pro fight. Um I went into my first pro fight with almost a year of training. So I had, you know, I've been doing this since probably 2009. But yeah, I haven't been training very long. I'm very coachable. I catch on really quick. I do a lot of visualization, um, which has been helpful. A lot of people don't, that's like very low on their totem pole, but it, it counts for a lot of things, especially drilling in the back of your mind. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm pretty lucky that I, I catch on pretty quickly. <laughs> okay. How did you get the name the Belizean Bruiser? Because I'm sitting here thinking you and sparring just, you know, bruising people up all the time. All right. So when I first started jujitsu, I was the only female in the entire gym. And every time I was partnered up with a guy, the look on their face was like, oh, I'm not wearing my cup today because I was notorious. <laughs> I was notorious for, you know, kneeing a guy in the balls or elbowing them in the nose basically after a roll with me when I first started you were either bleeding or on the ground in the fetal position holding on to your golden jewels so they just called me the bruiser from there so you a dirty fighter oh man come on now. <laughs> when it comes to the boys yeah <laughs> oh okay okay so now that's just I guess that's just to kind of keep them from uh going too rough on you right 
You know how to stop them. Just even a little flick. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of mean. I wouldn't want to spar you. You mean? I, I, I don't know. That's that's kind of mean. I'm just I'm just playing with you. So now you know, hey, you know, I, I'm I'm also a track and field coach here. Which events did you run? I was a heptathlete. Really? Mhm. I ran for Long Beach State on a full ride scholarship, and I did the heptathlon and both relays. Oh, so how far did you throw the shot put? I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> Okay, the shot put. Let me see if I can remember. Um, I want to say 38, 39 sounds about right. I don't know. I couldn't remember the shot put off because in the heptathlon, the shot put is the lowest scoring. So it was one of those things I just wanted to get done. I didn't really care about the shot put. Um, it was more the high jump and the javelin that and hurdles that were my favorite. Oh, Okay. Okay, so you a jab thrower. Okay, so what did you throw the jab? Like a 155 feet, 200 feet? 178. 178. Hey, that's pretty intense. <laughs> that's pretty for intense. For a yeah. For, I just loved the javelin. I love the javelin. Okay, so, you know, in case somebody try to, you know, really get real with you, you can take a javelin and spear them to death. Well, you can impale them pretty quick, yeah. couldn't you? Done. I'm ready for the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So speaking of that, you know, now most of the MMA fighters I've interviewed, they go to the gun range. Are, are, are you any different? Like, do, do you actually go to shooting ranges and are you good with guns? With my dad, yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I shot my first gun when I was six months pregnant. Um, went to the shooting range with my dad. He wanted me to have a healthy respect and knowledge of guns. So absolutely, yeah, you've got to be. Okay, yeah, okay. Now, and, and and I guess speaking of like uh, pregnancy, your son is he an athlete? Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. You're gonna see him. He uh, he picked up basketball. Um, he's a swimmer, which I don't know where he got that from because I hate swimming. But he <laughs> is phenomenally good, um, and he's a great track and field athlete. He uh. Last year was his first year doing high jump, his, and I believe he jumped 5'9 with just tennis shoes on and no te no technique, zero. And you know how important technique is. He just sat over the bar at 5'9. It was amazing. So he can't wait till he gets a little bit of technique. He'll be very good. I want to try to make him a decathlete. <laughs> yeah, okay. He just got to pick up the pole wall and the discus, and, you know, he'll be fine. Yeah, and he's tall enough. I, I mean, I was always short for a heptathlete. I was always the one that nobody thought was going to win, but slowly snuck up. Um, but I think my son would be a good decathlete. He's tall enough. He's six one, and usually, you know, the heptathletes and decathletes are rather tall. Six one. Where did that come mm -hmm. from? Because you like what five <laughs> foot? What five? Five foot four? Jeez, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, that's a compliment. I mean, you know, hey, good things coming. You know small packages sometimes. You got it from my mom's side of the family. They're Germans and they're rather tall. My mom's like 5'10 and her dad was like 6'2. Um, her brother is like 6'6. Six, six, so they're rather tall Germans. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, so do you ever worry that your son going to start fighting? No. Okay, so he I has... I wish he would. He had, I mean, you should see him. His Man. length is ridiculous. He has a, like a 76-inch length in his wingspan with his hands. I know, it's crazy. Um, and he picks up boxing really good, but he has no interest mm -hmm. in that one-on-one -on -one combat like me. Um, I think it gives him a kind of nerve he doesn't like. Um, he hasn't learned how to handle that type of anxiety yet, so he doesn't like it. Um, and he, he barely watches my fight. He gets really nervous. He's like, Mom, my stomach feels weird when you're... So I don't let him... He doesn't watch it if he doesn't want to. Okay. Okay, so he didn't watch you. So he didn't watch that last fight where you went in there and completely just... Uh, I, I think you were fighting uh, Duty Ava? Do, yeah. Um, no, he didn't watch it until my mom was like, she's winning, baby, come look. And he's like, okay, I can watch now. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
he doesn't want he doesn't want to see me lose. Um, he he was so sad about the Holly fight. He's like, Mom, what happened? I was like, Baby, I'm okay. I promise. He's like, Aw, like he was really sad about the Holly fight. You know what? I was kind of sad too, and and, and yeah. I, but I was kind of sad that the commentating was so horrible. Like, do do, do you actually ever go? And like watch the replays of your fights, like you know, just to hear. No. The, the commentary. No, I probably should, but I I probably don't want to hear what they have to say. Um, and 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 honestly, even if I did hear what they had to say and it was negative, their opinions and thoughts don't matter to me, and so that's why I don't care to watch it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just it wasn't like they weren't being like ultra negative. They weren't saying mean things about you. It's just. They never wanted to highlight when you did something that was, you know, that was actually pretty good. Cause see, you know, I, I, I actually I do film studies of uh, of the women in, in mixed martial arts, and you know they didn't pick up on the little subtle things that you did. Like, you know, you would do things like you would disrupt Holly's offense. You know, where you know when she was trying to get these combinations, you would do something to disrupt the offense. You know, or you know even some of the leg kicks that you were giving her. You know, they they just never picked up on any of that stuff. They were just like, oh, okay. Well, how have there, you know, you know, and we see that with a lot, a lot of the um, the fights. You know, the commentators have who they want to win, um, and that's evident with the way they talk. Until things start to turn around drastically, then they change their tune. It's common. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's because on 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 the other end of the spectrum, eventually they're going to be for me. So. I don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, eventually they will be. I, I'm, I'm gonna tell you because I was almost wishing you would have took the microphone and uh, you know, hey, let me show you how to commentate. Let me show you how to commentate the fight for real. That's what I wish right. you did. But you know, I know, I know, I know you got to be good. You can't go knee them in the testicles. I mean, so you can't do that. Unless <laughs> <laughs> they're on the mat. <laughs> yeah, unless they're on the mat. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you offer one of those commentators, you know, like a free session with you, you know, and then. <laughs> And then you can just take some aggression out on them. I'm trying to tell you, that's what y'all to do. No, I'll just play. So, okay, so now, now I read this, and you know my mouth was wide open. Okay, so you 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 actually tried to do an episode of the Ultimate Fighter, and they told you mm-hmm. you were too old. Mm-hmm. Are you serious? I was 36 at the time, and I had made it to the second day. I guess is what they call it, the second day of the tryouts. Yeah, there's a lot of fighters here that only have that many fights. You know, I I have a good record, and they're like, well, you know, you're kind of, you know, on the cusp of, you know, age of what we're looking for. I go, I, yeah, I'm 36, but I go, look, this is what I told them. I'm like fine wine. I get better with age. This is exactly what I told them. And I said, you have to believe me. I go, half of these girls that you have coming in, they're completely out of shape. As soon as they leave you, they're going to go have some hot dogs and hamburgers. Me, I'm going to go work out because I'm an athlete. I'm in shape. I go, trust me, I'm not old. And they're like, "Mm, you're just kind of, um, you know, you're kind of old for us. And um, we're looking for, you know, younger group and and I just was like you don't want to do this you guys you know I kept trying to re-encourage them that hey I'm not old Um, I'm an athlete I can do this Um, and I just I did I guess it didn't work because later on that night I got the phone call that they're gonna send me back home the next day see that that, (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. what you didn't you know and at the time when you was doing that you know you didn't look any bit of 36 and I'm just trying to tell you you didn't look 36. <laughs> so, you know, unless you told them, I mean, how could they figure out you were 36? 